A warm welcome to all members and friends. Thank you for joining our English pre-recorded worship service. Please rise for the call to worship. Our ancestors have led us here. We are witnesses of their faith. The wisdom of the ages has called us here. We are children of its call. The choice to follow God lies before us. We are heirs of its promise. The Lord of life has called us here. We, we are, are here, here to worship the Lord. Lord.
as you are able, please remain standing as we continue our worship in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we praise your name. We exalt you. We worship you at your footstool. For holy are you. May we not be fools to give up this privilege to worship you. Lord, may you lead us by your Spirit to praise you. Yes, Lord, may our hearts overflow with thanksgiving and our mouths proclaim your everlasting greatness that you are our all in all. Loving God, thank you for sending your one and only Son, Jesus, that we might be saved through him. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your loving kindness. May you grant us strength to hold on to our faith firmly to the very end. And may we shine the light of your presence everywhere that we go. Yes, Lord, we so, so need you and we love you so much. Merciful God, you are the Lord of compassion. Forgive us that we fail to recognize you in the busyness of our lives. Forgive us that we have allowed matters of the world to rule over our hearts and we have sought to achieve successes with our own strength. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Remind us always of your holy presence that is near us, that is in us. Teach us to stay alert to what happens around us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Almighty God, we bring before you those amongst us who are sick. By your grace, Lord, may you restore them and make them strong, firm and steadfast. May you take away their pain according to your will in your time. Lord, some have been wounded in their sorrow. May you open their eyes to see beyond their hurt and frustrations. May you fill their hearts with hope and joy, for the joy of the Lord is their strength. Heavenly Father, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. As we receive your word this morning, help us not only to hear it, but to keep your word within our hearts and to always practice the truth in love. Sovereign God, this is our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Today's scripture reading is from the book Revelation, chapter 3 verses 1 to 6 verse 1 write this letter to the angel of the church in sardis this is the message from the one who has the sevenfold spirit of god and the seven stars i know all the things you do and that you have a reputation for being alive but you are dead wake up strengthen what little remains for even what is left is almost dead. I find that your actions do not meet the requirements of my God. Go back to what you heard and believe at first. Hold to it firmly. Repent and turn to me again. If you don't wake up, I will come to you suddenly, as unexpected as a thief. Yet there are some in the church in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes with evil. They will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. All who are victorious will be clothed in white. I will never erase their names from the book of life, but I will announce before my father and his angels that they are mine. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what He is saying to the churches. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. Good morning. Now, there is a story about a married couple. They had a quarrel and ended up giving each other the silent treatment. And two days into their new argument, the man realized that he needed his wife's help. So in order to catch a flight to Chicago for a business meeting, he had to get up at 5 a.m. So not wanting to be the first to break the silence, he wrote on a piece of paper, Please wake me at 5 a.m. The next morning, the man woke up only to discover that his wife was already out of bed and it was 9 a.m. Of course, his flight would have long since departed. He was about to find his wife and demand an answer for all these failings of hers when he noticed a piece of paper by the bed. He read, It's 5 a.m. Wake up. Well, how often do you fall into a deep sleep that you miss the time to wake up? Or how often you just couldn't get up when the alarm beeps and so you leave the alarm to snooze for a period of time? In fact, after spending many hours at work or in school, what is the first thing that you would want to do? It is quite common to hear someone saying, I just want to sleep. Now, scientist research shows that we need to sleep because sleep powers the mind, it restores the body, and it fortifies virtually every system in the body. So we are like the battery that needs to be charged, that needs to be recharged by sleeping. And according to the National Sleep Foundation, healthy adults need between 7 and 9 hours of sleep per night. Babies, young children and teens need even more sleep to enable their growth and development. And people over 65 should also get 7 to 8 hours per night. Well, sleep indeed is essential and good for us. Of course, when used at the right time and at the right place. How about the scriptures? In the scriptures, sleep could be literally as a simple act of human experience, such as in Genesis. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. Or sleep could be used figuratively, as in Psalm 1 to 1, that the Lord watches over us while we sleep. Lastly, sleep also can be used metaphorically of spiritual dullness, sloth, or lack of watchfulness towards God. And we find these passages urging us to wake up from our sleep. Recall the irresponsible person who refuses to acknowledge the reasonable demands of human life in the book of Proverbs. An example is Proverbs 6, 9 to 11. And sleep is also metaphorically used to describe the church in Sardis. Let's look at the other churches in Asia Minor, which is present-day Turkey, to which different letters were written. We have Ephesus, the forgetful church, Smyrna, the suffering church, Pergamon, the compromising church, Thyatira, the tolerant church, and now Sardis, the slumbering or sleeping church. What does that mean? Now, a little background will be useful. So Sardis was the capital of the kingdom of Lydia. Located on a number of important trade roads, Sardis was a wealthy city. It was made prosperous when gold was found, as well as the availability of products such as fruits and wool. Although Sardis boasted a massive temple dedicated to the pagan goddess, the city was the first city in that part of the world that was converted by the preaching of John. And according to archaeologists, their place of worship, the synagogue, was the largest known ancient synagogue in Sardis. Yet, history also reveals that over time, 
towards the end of the first century, there started to have deviations from the teachings of Christ amongst the believers. And idolatry was heavily in existence then. So that brings us to the purpose of the letter. Jesus reveals the situation in Sadis and her people. And then he gives warnings and commands to stay alert and repent. And he ends with a promise to those who remain faithful. All with the purpose to warn, to encourage the people. First, a review of the situation. That is, what is the state of their soul? Verse 1. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, The words of him who has the seven spirits of God and seven stars. I know your works. You have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Who knows the real state of their soul? None other but Christ, who knows the people well, their deeds, their thoughts, and all their works. And he understands every aspect of their lives, past, present, and future. The church may have the truth. She may have the doctrines correct. She has won the name for herself. And she has gained a great reputation of being alive. Everything appears well and healthy. But in reality, the church is not really what it is reputed to be. The believers appear to have life, but they have almost forgotten who they are. They are in a devastating state inwardly, to the extent of being identified as spiritually dead. Spiritually dead in their soul and services, in their spirit, in their praying, in in their preaching for the ministers. So the situation is that spiritually the church and her believers are dead men walking. Their dead works indicate a lack of living faith as James tell us in the scripture. So also faith by itself if it does not have work is dead. But someone will say you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from work is useless? Now friends, let's look at ourselves now. Christ knows our needs. Christ knows our deeds. Christ also knows whether we are half-hearted or not. And Christ knows whether we are alive or dead. Therefore, what is the right reputation that we should have to be alive? And scripture teaches us to seek a good reputation with God and man. And not to boast to improve our own reputation. Not to seek a good reputation through outward show. And that is hypocrisy. For outward reputation cannot compare with a righteous heart. And scripture teaches us to be aware that serving God may lead to a bad reputation with unbelievers. So obviously, we as believers, we should strive for good reputation like Daniel in the Old Testament or the centurion in the New Testament. Now John Wesley, he created a structure known as the class meeting. So in groups of 10 to 12, members practice accountability for one another's faith walk. So each week, when the members met, each of them would answer the question, How is it with your soul? So the review of the situation for the church in Sardis is also a review of our situation. So friends, how is it with your soul today? Having done a review of the situation, Jesus then turned to warn believers to awake from their sleep or spiritual death. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. In the scripture, the call to wake up is repeated in several places. One is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. So be on your guard, not asleep like others. Stay alert 
and be clear headed. And another one in Romans 13. Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. Well, just to name a few. Wake up! It means to be on the alert, to be clear-headed, to be sober. That is a command to action, a command to come into a new state of being. So friends, we can say that the believers at Sardis, they are not wholly destitute of life. They are encouraged to wake up and change their ways before it is too late. And for us 21st century Christians, we are also warned against neglect of watchfulness. What are the dangers that we should be watchful? These include the danger of false teaching, temptation, neglecting the word of God, the danger of damage to the Lord's work, and the danger of speaking sinfully. And in addition, we should be watchful for blessings, the return of Jesus Christ, and opportunities to serve the Lord. So let us stay alert and come to a state that is pleasing to God. What next then? An action to strengthen what remains and is about to die. Strengthen is to make fast, fix firmly, to make more marked by firm determination or resolution. So just as bodily strength improves by exercising, so does the strength of the soul. The believers, including you and me, we are urged to improve those gifts and good habits that are faint, that are ready to die, if they are not attended to. For example, we need to hear and your heart to take action. We need to strengthen our faith. We need to strengthen our hope, which is the anchor of our soul which keeps us steadfast in all situations. And we need to strengthen our love that carries us forward with zeal and delight. So when faith, hope and love decline, we lose all our fervor in the spiritual disciplines. We become the target and ministry becomes a chore or even a burden. Friends, are you working into a new state of your life now so that what is left does not die but strengthen? Be watchful so that you do not drift away from God. Be watchful lest you become proud and strengthen your soul so that you do not sleepwalk in your Christian life. Indeed, we should be comforted always that God does not slumber. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. In Psalms 1 to 1. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. And I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids. Yet, our behaviour and attitude are like any other people in the world. We go to church on Sunday. We may be attend online church services on Sunday. But that's it. For the other six days, we are back into the world, indulging into the world's pleasure, leisure and worldly company. We follow the safe entry, the temperature check procedures, but we also grumble. Why we must do this? Why we must do that? What should be done or what should not be done? Etc. Etc. We want preaching that tells how good a Christian we have been. We want blessings from God. Yet we don't want to participate in anything that takes away our time. We are not willing to make sacrifices that is against our own desire. The Church of Sardis is known as the slumbering church whose works are incomplete in the sight of God. It is as good as God telling the believers in Sardis that I have found your conduct far from perfect in my sight. Now, in the days of the stagecoach, a man undertook a journey. He was informed that there were first 
second and third class passengers. However, all the seats on the coach looked alike to him. So what did he do? He purchased a third class ticket. All went well for a time and the man was congratulating himself upon having saved so much money. Presently, they came to the foot of a very steep hill. And the driver stopped the horses and shouted, First class passengers, keep your seats. Second class passengers, get out and walk. Third class, get out and push behind. Wow, what we need in the kingdom work is third class passengers. Those who will push, not first class, who are contented to sit and look on while the others are working. Not second class passengers who are willing to walk away when real work comes. But third class passengers who are willing to bear the burden and the heat of the day. Friends, what class passenger are you? Do your actions meet the requirements of God? Then in verse 3, Jesus gave us more imperatives for us to stay on guard. Remember then what you received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. The believers in Sardis are spiritually dead. Perhaps they are not aware of what is really happening in the church or in the world. Or they are taking a very chill position since Christ's return is still unknown. Basically, the believers are in a standstill position. They are not growing. In fact, their life is gradually decaying. Here, Christ wants them to remember. To remember the process of recalling the past, especially the presence and activity of God in the history of His people. So that, when they remember God's work in the past, they are led to praise and rejoice and to hope for the future. Because God himself remembers. God remembers his covenant, his promises, his people. And God remember our sins no more. Friends, how about you? Do you remember the goodness of God in your life? We are to remember that we are God's people. We are to remember God's acts in the past, God's wrath, God's commands, our responsibilities towards one another. We are to remember the death of Jesus Christ. And we are to remember how our lives have been transformed. Yes, we are to keep it, to observe, to conform our actions and practices and we are to hold fast to our faith. Friends, we are to keep a life of obedience with a desire to learn, unwillingness to receive this truth leads to spiritual darkness. So is there an urgency to obey these commands? Yes. According to Eugene Peterson in the message, the condition is desperate. If you are still oblivious to God, Jesus will return when you least expect it. Break into your life like a thief in the night. Jesus Christ will return in glory at the end of history to raise the dead, to judge the world, to destroy all evil and opposition to God and consume it His kingdom. Believers like you and me, we are encouraged to be always ready for His return and wait with anticipation because it will happen unexpectedly. So friends, are you ready? Or are you still sleeping? Come on, let us wake up. Take action today before it is too late. In the final section of his letter, Christ gave a promise. Yet, you have still a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. The one who conquers will be clothed thus 
in white garments and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before the angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. While many in Sardis are spiritually dead, there are still some who are alive spiritually. Their reward is that they will walk with God in white, which symbolizes purity and acceptance before God. Reason being, they are worthy. Now friends, are we included in the promise? Yes, when we do good deeds. It is not about earning merit points from God. Instead, it is about doing what is pleasing to and acceptable by God. For only God truly merits honor and praise. But He graciously considers those who humbly serve Him with wholehearted devotion to be worthy disciples. Friends, are you considered worthy by others? Or are you considered worthy by God? In fact, worthiness like righteousness is credited to a person by God. With this in mind, we constantly pray for you that our God may make you worthy of His calling and that by His power, He may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. So who are considered worthy by God? Those who put God first and deny themselves. Those who suffer persecution for the sake of Jesus Christ. Those who stand firm for the gospel. Those who are faithful in the use of resources which God has given them. Those who welcome God's people. And in today's passage, those whose lives show Christ-like godliness. Here are two characters in the scripture who can be deemed worthy. Noah and Caleb. And yes, we share in Christ's victory by faith. The vision of the final victory is in Christ Jesus. We are not only conquerors, but we are also citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem. Our names are written as citizens of heaven in the book of life and will not be blotted out of the book of life. Another metaphor for eternal life. What's more, Jesus will acknowledge us before his Father God, before the holy angels. Friends, so are you ready to receive this promise? The church in Sardis was a slumbering church because the believers were turning away from God. Their souls were spiritually dead. But God who loved them so much that He gave them warnings and commands to help bring them back from death. They were to wake up and repent or face the serious consequences from God. Then they would enjoy the promise of God as citizens of heaven. Friends, as we draw near the end of 2020, here is a challenge for each one of us. Well, you can call it a review or a reflection. Would you help yourself or one another to do a check if your soul is in the right state? Or do you, like the church in Sardis, have the reputation of being alive but are dead? Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that you are always ready to pull us out of darkness to the light. Help us to be watchful always of what is around us. May all of us in the community of faith in FMC watch over one another that we will not take things in life for granted. Lord, it's really easy to get lost in all the demands of life. We become restless. We start to lose connection with church with you. Lord, may we not fall into slumber. Instead, may we grow to be worthy followers of Christ. Guide us, Lord, we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Morning. Welcome to all. If this is your first time to uh, FMC's uh, service, then a special welcome to you. Let's now greet each other 
Can we stand? Can we stand right now and turn to the other and say, God is good. And if you are greeted this way, please reply all the time. God is good all the time. Please be seated. So now while seated, I'll text these words to another uh, brother or sister in Christ. Text them and say, God is good. And if you're receiving this, likewise, you text back all the time. God is good all the time. Just two announcements. The first announcement, the 45th session of the Chinese Annual Conference. Remember, okay, remember to pray for the conference. We are electing the new uh, CAC president, the board chairs. Uh, pray for wisdom, pray for good insight and God's guidance. Because MCS is a connectional church, the appointment of the pastor is on a yearly basis. So pray for the board of appointments as they make decisions to appoint the clergy to the various churches in the CAC, inclusive of FMC. Second announcement, the uh, cookbook. Yeah, published by the General Conference WSCS is priced at $10. Uh, is in aid of uh, MWS program. So please check out the details from the church office. Let's prepare ourselves right now for tithes and offerings. Let's pray. Father, we now return to you a portion of what you have blessed us with. In Jesus' name. Amen. On the screen now, Okay, on the screen now is our giving method, so please take your phones right now and scan the QR code. Online giving, scan the QR code. If you are uh, sending the offering by check, remember to contact the church office and let Wendy know. On the screen, the QR code, please scan it. I'll give you some time for this. The same screen will appear at the end of the service if you need more time for this. Let's now stand for the doxology. Let's stand. Yeah. 
Please remain standing for the benediction. Go forth. Be awake to God's work in your lives. Receive the benediction. So now the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you today and the days that follow. Amen. Please be seated. The service has ended. See you next Sunday.